Pete texts. Mom, it's about what happened today at the hospital. That's not acceptable. Who do you think you are? What? Come on, Mom. Not what. I'm obviously referring to you ranting and raving at my wife. Throwing around nonsense accusations like Jason ended up like this because of you and it's all your fault at her. Nonsense. It's true and you know it. If she hadn't been driving dangerously, you never would have gotten hurt. You're a paraplegic because of her. I told you that's not true. How many times do I have to say the same thing? We were parked up by a crossing when someone asleep at the wheel crashed into us from behind. Neither me nor Ella did anything wrong. But if there was no accident, you'd still be a normal person, wouldn't you? I can't help but vent my anger. It's only natural. I'm your mother. A normal person? Are you saying I'm not a normal person? In any case, I need you to stop giving my wife a hard time. It wasn't her fault, and she feels awful enough without getting it in the neck from you. She got injured herself, you know. I don't give even one-tenth of a damn about someone else's kid. You're the one I'm worried about, Jason. You're my only boy. Someone else's kid? That's my wife you're talking about. Are you aware we're married? That makes her family. Family! Anyway, I'm fully capable of getting by and earning a living even if I'm in a wheelchair. So you really don't need to worry about me. Fine, have it your way. Oh, how ungrateful. To think I'm kind enough to worry about you and this is the thanks I get. Jason, listen to me. I had a long, hard think last night. <sighs> and I decided it would be better if me and you never had anything to do with each other ever again. I think we should cut all ties, son. What? It's time to address the elephant in the room, son. You're a cripple. Living alone is going to be virtually impossible for you from now on. There's no hope of you being able to look after me when I'm old and infirm if you can't even look after yourself. Old and infirm? What? Basically, you're cutting all ties with me because I can't look after you when you're old. That's not the only reason. On top of that, I simply don't have enough time or energy to look after you. Which means it would be quite inconvenient to have you around. I'm already getting old, you know. My knees creak, my hips ache. I'm no spring chicken. My plan is to live out my years getting by on your father's inheritance. That would be a lot easier for me if I had one less family member to worry about. Think of it as an opportunity to express some gratitude for all the hard work I put into raising you. You'll accept, won't you? You can't be serious. Is this the kind of thing a mother says to her heavily disabled son? Can't believe it. Come on, Jason. Surely you can see it can't be helped? I put in years of blood, sweat, and tears into raising you and did a damn fine job, if I do say so myself. I had no issue with devoting my time and energy to you when I thought it would pay off after I reached an old age, but now? Oh, what use is a son who can't even walk around without assistance? And I'm asking you nicely. Won't you be a dear and free me from my servitude? I see. Basically, what you're saying here, Mom, is that the only reason you had me in the first place was so I could change your diapers when you get old. And now that I can't walk due to the car crash, I no longer have any value. So you're throwing me away like a piece of garbage. On top of that, you also plan on keeping all my dad's inheritance for yourself even though he specifically stated a sizable chunk should go to me. It's hardly my fault. Want to know what the single most important thing in the world is, son? Having a solid plan. If I cut you out of my life, I can live out the rest of my days entirely on your father's money. As for your side of the bargain, you also get out of having to care for me when I'm old and frail. No matter how you look at it, it's a win-win situation. Do whatever you like. 
I won't try and stop you cutting me out of your life. But don't you dare try and contact me or my wife ever again. This is final. <laughs> That's my line. Don't bother showing up at the house and try to get your greedy hands on the inheritance because you won't be setting foot inside ever again. Starting tomorrow, we're strangers. Is that clear? Okay, fantastic. Bye-bye. Jason! You came to the house today, didn't you? I warned you! Why did you take the fridge and TV? Give them back at once. Because they're my personal belongings that I paid for? I can't leave my stuff at your house forever. I gave the key to a close friend and had him stop by to pick them up. Oh, I told him to leave all the frozen stuff in a cooler box, so you're best off eating them ASAP before they spoil. I cannot believe you. I had no idea my son was so petty and small-minded. Oh, did I say son? Oh, my mistake. You're a stranger now, of course. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Forget it. That fridge and TV were probably just second-hand junk anyway. I'll buy some shiny new ones with your dad's inheritance. So I don't need your junkyard scrap anyway. Sure. The fridge is a brand new Hitachi with touchscreen feature configuration and Wi-Fi connectivity. And the TV is an ultra-thin, flat-screen, 70-inch home cinema tier marvel of modern technology. It's true, though. Maybe you'll be able to afford them if you use dad's inheritance. It's your house, so do what the hell you like. I don't need to be told by you. Believe me, that's what I fully intend on doing. Never message me again. The next time you enter this house without my permission, the police will be called. Um, I hate to break this to you, but you're the one who contacted me. Jason! What? I was sure you told me we're cutting all ties. Did I dream it? Don't be sarcastic with me, boy. I have one last thing to tell you. Believe me, you want to hear this. What? I threw away all the stuff in your room. You did what now? Think about it. There was no reason for me to keep a complete stranger's belongings lying around in my house. Yesterday was a combustible garbage day, and today was large refuse. Which means that in just two trips from the garbage collectors, all your stuff is gone forever. <laughs> How lucky am I? Does that also include the cards in the cardboard boxes? Probably. I threw everything away, after all. Oh no, there weren't items of immense sentimental importance in those boxes, were there? Oh, what a shame. I'm choking for you here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, tragically for you, though, I threw them out yesterday. So there's no way of reclaiming them now. <laughs> I threw away your luggage, too. With this, the cutting of ties is complete. Now we really are complete strangers. Now, for one last time, never message me again. You really went and did it this time, huh? What? Did you really throw away Dad's inheritance? Inheritance? What are you talking about? His collection. Oh man, you really went and did it this time. Each and every item in those boxes currently sells for somewhere in the vicinity of $400 to $1,600. He didn't own a single thing that wasn't worth something. Plus, he had absolutely tons of stuff. That stuff was worth tens of thousands of dollars in total. And that's a conservative estimate. I wouldn't be unreasonable to put the combined total at over $75,000. What? what? What are you talking about? You're lying. Those boxes are full of nothing but silly kids games. Junk. There's a premium on junk like that in certain circles. They were only set to go up in value too since they're no longer in production. Go ahead, try searching for expensive card game on the internet. You'll be surprised. Chances are the majority of results you'll get were the things in the boxes you just threw away. <laughs> Wait, 
no, you're lying. You're lying, right? Tell me you are. Are you sure they weren't just replicas? If they were really so valuable, why didn't you have your friend take them when he was here for the fridge and TV? Ah, there was no way I could take them. Dad said they were part of your inheritance. He said he wanted them to go to you. What? You know how Dad had a bit of a hoarding habit? Well, before he died, he divided up all the stuff that could be sold at a decent price between the family and wrote it in his will. To me, he left all of the heavier, more unwieldy antiques. To you, he left the lighter, easy to sell card games. What? This is the first I've heard of it. Of course it is. Dad asked me to tell you in the event, and only in the event that you were facing genuine financial hardship and struggling to get by. It's written in his last will and testament addressed to me. I can show you if you don't believe me. Now, I did plan on doing as he asked and was prepared to go through the necessary procedures if that time ever came. Oh my God. Good grief, Mom. I wouldn't have guessed in a million years you'd toss everything out. Me or the cards. <laughs> it's not a total loss, though. I plan on taking good care of all the antiques Dad gave me at the least. Jason, you get yourself down to the landfill and start digging through the trash at once. What? No way. I'm in a wheelchair. That's impossible. But you said that stuff was worth $75,000. You might still make it if you go now. Hurry up, move, move, move. I don't think so. You said you tossed them out yesterday, so they've probably all been crushed by now. <laughs> don't get clever with me, boy. Oh, I know, I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. If you come back with the $75,000 worth of cards, I'll allow you back into this family. Not just that, but I'll even look after you. Sorry to disappoint you, but like I already told you, I don't need looking after. What are you talking about? You're a wheelchair-bound cripple, for heaven's sake. How can someone like you live on their own? I'm not alone. I have my wife. Anyway, do you even know what my job is? I create plastic models. I receive commissions and then create prototypes for dolls, figures, and models. Which is why I don't need to walk to earn a living. What? Does that mean getting crippled in the accident has no effect on your salary? How many times have I told you at this point? Five? Ten? Damned if I know. What kind of mother doesn't know what their own son's job is? Do you have that little interest in me? Really? You do that? That's great news, son. Oh, wow. Am I your son again now? That sure is convenient, huh? There's just one problem. I don't consent to this rekindling of ties you seem to be assuming is taking place. We're strangers now, and we always will be. Jason, how can you be so cold towards your mother? Have you no heart? Despite me being so lonely, what with your father gone and all, how horrible. Jason, my boy, won't you be a darling and come back to the house today? Let's have some supper together. I'm not eating with you. Don't be ridiculous. There seems to be a small contradiction between cutting all ties with me and then inviting me over for supper to play happy families. Jason, please. This wasn't an easy decision for me to make, you know. I only did what I did because I was filled with anxiety about the future. I'm sure you were. I had a feeling to that effect which is why I intentionally left only the card games behind. You're the one who threw them all out solely because you made the mistaken assumption they were guilty of the crime of belonging to me. To be honest, I'm more sick of you than I am sympathetic. I've got an idea. Won't you be a dear and give me all the antiques your dad left you? I don't mind if they're heavy. What? Why would I do that? Why would I give you the things Dad explicitly said he wanted to go to me? I won't even be selling them anyway. Those antiques were part of Dad's cherished collection, and they were really important to him. All the more reason to hand them over. 
They'd be far more valuable if I sold them. I could use them to get by on. What use are they as decorations for your apartment? They'd be nothing but clutter. It's what your father would want, Jason. You know it's true. I could explain in explicit detail why you're wrong, but you probably wouldn't even understand. Anyway, I have absolutely no intention of giving you any of his stuff, nor do I ever want to live with you again. I'm gonna stop replying to your messages soon. How can you be so insensitive? Oh, I've had it with you. Fine, I don't need you. I still have some savings in my bank account. That's great. Since you've been so heavily reliant on Dad's inheritance all this time, you must have saved up about $75,000 by now, right? What does my bank balance have to do with you, boy? If I did have that much, I'd be able to live off it for the rest of my life. Do you seriously think that'd be enough to see you through the rest of your days? What? 75000 Of course it would. With your current lifestyle, you're eating through at least $15,000 a year. Does it take a genius to figure out you're only going to be able to keep that up for five more years? You could afford to have a higher standard of living when Dad was still around. But there's no way your current lifestyle is sustainable. What's your point? Are you saying I need to tighten my belt and save up more? No chance. You can't stop me buying the things I want. Listen. Want to know what the simple most important thing in the world is? Having a solid plan. <laughs> if anyone can do it, you can, Mom. <laughs> I have to make this clear, though, and it really pains me to say this, but me and my wife simply don't have enough time or energy to look after a complete stranger. Stop it, please, just wait. What do you mean, stranger? We're family. I'm your mother. Let's just talk this over. Jason, please, answer the phone. Look, Mom, I'm a cripple. Things would be a whole lot easier for me if I had one less family member to worry about. Look on the bright side. You're free to do what you want with Dad's inheritance. And I'm blessed to have a loving wife who looks after me which means you don't have to go through the trouble. No matter how you look at it, it's a win-win situation. <laughs> Apparently after that, much to my astonishment, my mom ran to the landfill on her own and entered illegally by climbing over the back fence in a frenzied panic. When she was brought to my apartment in the back of a police car, she was covered head to toe in garbage juice. It smelled something like a mixture between sewage and rotting flesh. Of course, being strangers now, I firmly rejected my responsibility and sent her back on her way with those two unfortunate policemen who had to tolerate the stench. She was driven back to her house ranting and raving like a lunatic. It was what happened over the next few days that shocked me the most. Me and my wife got back from a day out to find someone had been rummaging through our belongings and made a total mess of the place. When I confronted my mom, she confessed to sneaking into the apartment and turning the place upside down in an attempt to find my dad's antiques. Thankfully, her search was in vain because my wife's parents very kindly agreed to let us keep everything at their place for a while. However, my patience had reached its limit. We enlisted the help of a lawyer through a recommendation from my stepdad. When we went over to warn her that we'd take legal action if she ever pulled anything like that again, my mother, tragically ignorant of the world, immediately became timid and backed down. And she hasn't bothered us since. I do have a feeling she'll probably try to get in touch with me again after a little while. So me and my wife are currently making preparations to move on the down low. I already bought a new cell phone, which means that by the next spring, we finally will be strangers once and for all. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.